There's an old saying, BHP sells cars, talk wins races. This thing is gonna have a bucket full of talk. Welcome back. It's the next part of the 1-9 build up. Obviously you will have seen us do the fab work, exhaust, manifold, boost pipes, all that type of thing. So today, we're gonna to get on with the finishing off the airflow meter, getting that done and dusted. We're gonna pull the engine out, and we're going to install the paddle clutch. We're going to basically give it a good clean the engine because when we pulled it out of the car, we didn't really clean it, we just shoved it in because we were limited on time. I'm going to install the inlet manifold that I built in a previous video and we're going to put some of the little performance bits on that you need on these things like the r80 pump uprated uh, fuel pressure sensor i'm still waiting for the four bar map sensor but we can get all the, the engine done get it cleaned we can get it pulled out clutch in back in the hole then basically wait for parts to arrive i don't know what's going to end up for the end of this end of the day so let's crack on and fingers crossed we'll get it out get it clean and get it back in so the engine's now out and i'm going to talk through what we're doing so this is the high pressure pump and this is the one we're replacing it with also inlet manifold now the inlet manifold comes with all this flappy valve system down here that opens the closed valves which are very common on these engines to block up so obviously on the previous video you might have seen is me basically welding up the flappy valve system modifying the egr deleting the anti uh, shudder valve and making it basically a lot better and a lot better you know a bit more easier flowing inlet so this is obviously the next job is the pump now this is classed as an r70 pump and this is an R80 pump. And obviously, just to tell people, if you look at the sticker, R80. And obviously, that'll say R70. So you've got to take the timing cover off, pin the pulley to take this off, spin the, the, the ball off, take it off. But whilst that's off, you can easily do the inlet manifold. Hence, me taking the engine out. Plus, when we did it, I never sealed the back casing because obviously we swapped that. And obviously, I've got the paddle clutch to put in. But I'll show that when I pull the box off. So let's get on with taking this pump off and this inlet and putting the new one on. So people who are thinking of doing this pump swap, it's quite simple to be fair. Two of the timing case bolts go through these two holes which lock this pulley into place so you don't have to touch the timing belt there's three bolts one two three and it all comes off so original pump you can see there r70 obviously bigger pump more fuel more power so now i can get to that bolt there on the inlet manifold so i can get the inlet off and i can get this other inlet manifold on now pumps on modified inlets on as you can see no shutter valve no egr quite a simple one 2200 bar rail sensor second hand one and literally just wind this one out and put the other one in and it's as simple as that you need these modifications so you can make over you know 250 260 horsepower depending on turbo specs and obviously we're going for around the 300 horsepower mark so we're going to need that so technically nip that up that's that job done the gearbox off it's obviously the m32 this is the old clutch which we had on there which looks like it's a factory gm one but again looks like there's loads of meat on there but anyway that's no good for the power we want more the torque you need a good clutch to hold torque so that's why this is going in the bin and we're upgrading and this is the new one it's obviously a six paddle they class it as a stage three i hate stages but they class it as a stage three clutch and this should hold the torque rating that we're after so now i'm going to clean up the flywheel a little bit and put this onto the engine so it's ready to take the power so put the engine back in the hole and i'm starting to assemble it all back up now so joining stuff like clutch pedal all the wiring the fuel lines at the back are all sorted out so now it's the slow process now of rebuilding it back up to the way it was with the manifolds the front end the battery and also because we stripped the wiring loom so far down i need to start loom taping all that so next job on the list is loom tape all the engine bay loom get it all sit where it needs to sit get it all p clipped up get it all tidy kind of coming to a bit of the end of what i can physically do time wise and what i can do working on the car reason being is in essence i've run out of parts everything's on order i'm waiting for them to arrive so i'm kind of a bit stuck so let me show you where i'm up to and i'm drawing a line under it now for the amount of work i've done intercooler done both boost pipes all sorted out 
intercooler sorted out. Obviously, boost pipe there. Now, I've sorted all the wiring out. Also, I'll come over here. The 90 mil air flow meter I made, I've painted it black just to look a bit blending and a bit subtle. I want this car to be a bit of a sleeper. So, again, when you open the bonnet, I don't really want everything in your face. So, you can also see everything's in loom tape. I've done all the loom all the way through the car. I've made a little heat shield, which basically when you open the engine bay and you don't see the log manifold, I feel it's, you know, it's a bit more subtle. It looks a bit more factory. Again, down pipe sorted out, intake pipe sorted out. I've done the pump. I've done the four bar map sensor that arrived in the post. I've put the inlet manifold on. I'm literally on the final drags on bits and pieces. Like I haven't got no Michelo clips to go on there. So I'm waiting on them to come. I've not got the size reducer from three inch to three and a half inch i've not got the air filter the oil feed pipe for the turbo i'm having to wait for that to arrive but they're little jobs i can honestly say i'm really pleased with how it's come oh and if anyone who's actually watching this build i've lifted the engine up because the original engine was on a tilt so all i've done is i've made oh you can't see i've made some little spaces to sit under that mount so yeah i'm very happy everything seems to go into plan all the parts are on order i'm just waiting for them to arrive now fingers crossed they'll arrive in a good time and then i can and get this car finished off. Well, that's kind of tying up the work I've been doing on the Corsa. The, obviously, there's still some bits of jobs to do. Again, as I said, waiting on parts. But to go run through spec of what we've done, what power we're expecting, and a little bit about the car. It's a bog standard Z19 DTH. We fitted a 2260 turbo. We have fitted the four bar map sensor. We fitted the R80 fuel pump. Modified the inlet manifold to get rid of the flaps, the anti shudder valve, the EGR valve, and basically put it so there's just a straight pipe in. The full intercooler system we've done. Uh, I'm still debating whether to do bigger injectors, but again, I'm being told up to the 300 horsepower mark, we don't need them. Possible for the price of them, I might put them in there just for safety. Don't know. We'll, we'll think of that in the future but we're hoping for around you know 280 to 300 horsepower 400 to 450 foot pound of torque which in a little coarser should be more than enough and i think it's going to surprise quite a few people because what i'm looking forward to doing is getting a 300 horsepower ish 1.6 Z16 Corsa VXR. We've still got the Z20 Corsa VXR, the Astra VXR engine one, which will be around 300 horsepower. And then the diesel one, which again, be around the 300 horsepower mark. I'm putting them all up against each other on a realistic kind of race, quarter mile, not to 60, you know, not to 100. Put them all against each other to see which comes out on top. And if you put my money somewhere, it has to be on this little diesel van. It has to be. Because there's an old saying, BHP sells cars, torque wins races. So this thing is going to have a bucket full of torque. So go run this one here. Again, thanks for watching. Please, you know, click on like and subscribe for the journey of all the builds.